imagine now saying i don't even want any kid i don't want i don't want a girl i don't want a boy i don't want any i just want to be i just wanted to be the best of us imagine telling your 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 husband or your partner that type of thing or your parents mm -hmm. that's like another shade of wahala <laughs> Like, comment, and subscribe. Hi, darlings. If you're new here, my name is Yvonne, and I'm back with another video to my old subscribers welcome back and if you're just joining us welcome to the family today i'll be discussing how to have difficult conversations with your loved ones whether you're arguing whether it's an argument or it's just some you know awkward difficult conversation i'll also be talking about various difficult conversations and ways to handle or navigate these conversations by the way if you're not subscribed to my channel please make sure you subscribe right now as you'll be helping me out and so you don't miss the videos i'll be dropping consecutively for the rest of the year also don't forget to turn on post notifications so you can be notified every time i post a video it is tough to disagree with your loved ones whether it's a friend you know boyfriend girlfriend husband wife family member whoever it is it's really tough i mean ideally we should you know just or we could just avoid fighting with our families you know our friends or our partners but at the end of the day it's not an ideal world and i mean you know two people cannot always agree on every single thing you know we all we 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 at some time or at some point in time we almost have like difficult conversations with you know our loved ones so whether it's about dishes in the sink you know or you know general finances a whole range of topics can lead to arguments or disagreements or uncomfortable feelings putting off conflicts can actually lead to misunderstandings and you know hurt feelings so it's really important to know how to have certain conversations no matter how difficult or awkward you know that they might seem so that you can navigate small and major disagreements when they eventually happen but first let's get technical there are many levels of tough conversations you know from day-to-day -day arguments to plain bare big picture disagreements but while the seriousness or the severity of you know the topics and consequences vary you know they're all stressful you know in their own special way to handle they're all really stressful to handle and difficult to handle so let's just talk about the varieties of these difficult conversations and i'll be discussing three of them the first one i'll be discussing is day-to-day -day arguments these are like regular everyday arguments like household chores, you know, staying out past your curfew or the result of like a comment that you, you, you didn't actually think about before actually spitting it out. Basically the result of a poorly phrased, you know, comment. When dealing with these arguments, yeah, it may not require as much planning or, you know, shuttling, but there should be an emphasis, you know, on how you structure and phrase your words, you know, and how you listen as well. So instead of yelling, I think, you know, constructive criticism is, you know, what should be at the back of your mind. You know, this also can include setting boundaries, you know, with your loved ones, which can actually be really hard. Imagine trying to set a boundary with your twin brother or twin sister. Okay, that's too close. Even your best friend, you know, it's quite difficult. You know, you might feel guilty, you might feel anxious, you might feel full of self-doubt, you know, and a whole bunch of other emotions. But there's a reason that you want to set this boundary. There's a reason you want to set the boundary. And in this case, the only emotions that are relevant are yours. That's the truth. You first remember, you know, when you're setting a boundary, yeah, phrasing is actually important. You're ultimately telling someone what you want and what the consequences are if that boundary is crossed. For instance, okay, you could say, if you make comments about my appearance, then I'm going to leave, you know, or, if you don't stop yelling at me, then I'm going to hang up the phone. That's setting a boundary. Like while phrasing is important, you cannot ultimately control, you know, the response of the person you're having the conversation with. You know, some people have a very hard time being told, you know, no, you know, or being, um, do I say, what's the word, restricted. You know, some people cannot have it and they'll actually take it very personally. You know, and that's why phrasing the consequence as something you will do is actually better than saying they cannot do something. Instead of saying, do not hang up on me or, you know, um, I'm going to walk out on you. Maybe the person is saying something you don't like. 
you know that's why instead of saying i'm going to walk out on you we might which might actually come off as you know rude you're going to say if you make comments about my appearance then i'm going to leave you know so it's up to that person to actually go ahead and you know do what you don't want him or her to do and if you do it if he does it or if she does it sorry you leave you know now it's not even you being rude you told them the consequences of their actions and they actually went ahead with it and you told them what you you know said you were going to do so whose fault is it not yours so yeah that's just why setting boundaries is important and how phrasing and why phrasing you know is also important so you know after you tell them the consequences of what you know their actions will be you know when it comes as regarding you know you i mean it's now up to them you know how they respond you know so phrasing boundaries clearly helps remove any loopholes or misunderstandings that you know they might try to find for example if you're having an argument with like somebody over the phone and they start yelling you know rather than just hanging up abruptly you know and now being perceived as the rude one you know you're rude you hung up on me and all of that you know you could just tell them please stop yelling stop yelling you don't want to stop please again i'm politely asking please again i'm politely asking stop yelling or i'll hang up the phone you know you've told them now you've actually set a boundary you've told them what you don't like and you've told them the consequences if they go ahead with it and if they keep yelling please gently hang up your phone because i mean ain't nobody got time for that you told them in the first place you told them the repercussion of crossing that boundary and they crossed it so it's not your fault anymore they disrespected you and they did not care about that boundary so you had to do what you had to do another difficult conversation is that of planning for the future this one is for couples and you know those in relationships it can be awkward to plan your future with your partner you know the odds are you're pretty you know you're already pretty open with each other about what you want in life and all that but it's still uncomfortable to put yourself out there you know figuring out plans for where you want to live you know if you want to get married whether or not you want kids or how many kids you want you know how you'd split costs if you will split costs you know whether you're going to be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad you know another big life choices is absolutely stressful don't spring up a conversation you know about opening a joint bank account on your partner while you guys are having lunch don't do that set a time and you know give both of you a chance to prepare and um, be mindful of how you use words or how you phrase your words because there's a big difference between i don't think we need a joint account because xyz and i don't want you spending my money i mean you can see how both the, like both of them sound imagine somebody telling you imagine your partner telling you i don't want you spending my money that just comes out as black like, blatantly oh god i don't know what's wrong with me today but that just comes off as blatantly rude like absolutely rude you know but if you say okay i don't think we need a joint account because this and this and you give like reasonable reasons you know we could actually reason like matured people you know not it wouldn't but when you now say oh i don't want you spending my money i'm confused you know before you know it two people are arguing and speaking of family planning if you decide to be child free if you decide to be child free hmm, that can be a very difficult conversation with your families especially if you're nigerian i don't know if you, if you're nigerian and you're watching me i'm sure you could definitely relate imagine well for those who do not want children imagine telling your mother that imagine telling your mom oh or your parents you know i'm not I, I really don't want you know kids or your nigerian or african husband or husband with you know that mentality imagine opening your mouth to tell him please babe I, I don't think i want kids imagine especially nigerians that are mad that are crazy about male children Imagine now saying, I don't even want any kid. I don't want, I don't want a girl. I don't want a boy. I don't want any, I just want to be, I just want it to be the birth of us. Imagine telling your, 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 your husband or your partner, that type of thing, or your parents. Mm -hmm. That's like another shade of Wahala. 
So, you know, if you're going to have that kind of conversation, yeah, plan ahead when and how you're going to tell your loved ones, whether it's your father, your mother, your parents as a whole, your family, whoever you want to tell, just plan ahead, you know, how you're going to tell them, when you're going to tell them, you know, and set clear boundaries. You need to set clear boundaries around the discussions, you know, taking note of the fact that, you know, you can only control how you tell them or how you tell, you know, people, whoever it is, you know, something, but you cannot control how they feel about it or how they choose to react you know to whatever information you're giving them the last difficult conversation i'll be discussing is that of beliefs there's this saying i don't know if you've heard it before never discuss religion or politics at the dinner table there's a very good reason for this statement for this saying you know our brains are hardwired to reject you know information that contradicts our beliefs you know, but unfortunately, this also means that we're far more likely to fall victim to confirmation bias, which is basically where we only look for information that supports our views, you know, instead of looking for objective evidence or looking for information or evidence that contradicts, you know, what we believe in. And this makes conversations about politics, you know, religion and other beliefs much more difficult. Not everybody has the same beliefs and that is absolutely fine. That's okay. You know, if you disagree with somebody about iPhone versus Android or Gucci versus Louis Vuitton or, you know, Marvel versus DC, that is totally fine. But if someone's beliefs actually preclude them from believing that all humans should have the same, you know, level of human rights or of rights you know or everybody should have equal rights that is absolutely not okay so what on earth are you supposed to do if your loved ones are sharing you know weird terrible conspiracy theories about the pandemic or you know making some racist tribalistic or even colorist you know comments about somebody how do you have that particular difficult conversation without things getting you know defensive or you know awkward i'm going to go ahead and give you some tips on how to have certain difficult conversations you know with your family or friends or loved ones basically without things you know getting awkward the first tip i'll give you is to prepare you prepare think carefully about what you want out of the conversation if it's an argument ask yourself how you'd resolve it reasonably if it's a discussion about planning for the future be you know ready to compromise you know ask yourself what compromises you're willing to make when preparing make sure you know that it's just about one topic make sure the conversation is just going to be about one topic be mindful you know if you have other concerns or you know grievances that you you want to bring up just keep them in the separate conversation don't bring them up at that time don't even bring up all disagreements no don't do that don't you know start maybe you get into you're talking about something and you're like oh, a few months ago don't do that it's going to look like you carry things in your mind like you you really hold grudges and that's just no that's not it you're going to be giving whoever you're speaking with you're going to be giving them a really really bad opinion you know of you so just keep those whatever you have whatever else you have that doesn't concern you know the present conversation keep it in your pocket keep it somewhere else you know keep it in a wait just hold on for like another conversation or make it into you know another conversation you know prepare to fight there because you know yelling insults and silent treatment don't create anything positive it's also a good time to remind yourself why this person you're having the conversation with is important to you and that they're most likely not your enemy. Just because you have a different perspective or, you know, opinion from that person doesn't mean that you don't love them. It doesn't mean that, you know, their presence in your life doesn't have any value. Obviously, there's some things that, you know, are not okay to ignore in the name of family, like, you know, um, racism or tribalism or you know sexism or even homophobia or you know abuse those are more challenging convos and yeah I'm going to tackle them later you know in this video but for other disagreements remember that your end game is not to win remember that that's not your end game it is not to win but to come to an agreement it's not a competition it's an it's a conversation you know, it's not, you're not fighting, you're not fighting to be. You're actually having a conversation to come to an agreement. My next tip is to choose a time. 
while it might be tempting to you know talk about your frustrations or blot out your frustrations in the heat of the moment that is not the best way to handle sensitive subjects pick a time you know when both of you are free but definitely not right after work or you know before bed also maybe don't shoot them a we need to talk text while they're at work you know because that would literally ruin their day i mean imagine imagine doing something going about your day you know with happy thoughts and you know your partner or your fiance or your your boyfriend or whoever it is just texts you we need to talk just that we need to talk once your mind start going places like where you never thought they would go you start thinking somebody like me i like to overthink her i can't even know i'm going to be so mad if you know we end up having a conversation and it's not it's it's, it's just nah i'm not going to be happy that's that's just not a right way to, to just hold on wait for the person to you know be relaxed or something and then you find a diplomatic way to you know find a diplomatic approach you know to the conversation basically another tip is to use proper phrasing use proper phrasing we all have a tendency to feel personally attacked you know when we're having arguments or serious discussions so it's a good idea to phrase things in a non-accusatory way you know phrase things in a way that it's not going to look like you're accusing the person of doing you know something of committing one crime you know even though you might be upset you know you might be feeling upset people are more likely to get their guard up if they feel like they're being accused of something for example imagine me telling somebody can you not be so lazy and clean up after yourself i'm sick and tired of you always you know leaving your dishes in the sink i mean i'm telling you to do something but i'm telling you in a rude way but now instead of saying that imagine me now saying i feel stressed out you know when the house is messy can you please help me keep things tidier i think that's a more polite way to you know put the information across basically you know you're not you're not um you're not doing what you have to do and i'm telling you what i need you to do you know and when you tell somebody that i think that person will be more likely to go ahead and do whatever you know he or she needs to do without thinking you know you're you're insulting them or you're being rude to them or okay look at this imagine imagine maybe somebody has um bad breath or halitosis and you know i'm like oh your mouth stinks like it stinks most of the time and it makes me so uncomfortable and imagine me now imagine me saying this oh um i think you should have mints more often um i've realized you know sometimes you just you know just there's a way you arrange the words and it's not going to come out you know as rude i mean there's no nice way to tell somebody that their breath stinks but you know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah so what i'm basically saying is you know they're actually ways to phrase certain words you know that's not going to come off as you know rude and all of that now let's go back to the example i gave about um you know cleaning the house and you know putting dishes in the sink and all of that you know when i what i said first when i said um oh i'm sick and tired of you putting the dishes leaving the dishes in the sink when i come off that way it feels like or it sounds like i'm trying to start an argument but in the better phrasing you know when where i'm like you know i feel stressed when the house is messy could you help me you know keep things tidier that's actually really nice you know and it it just basically states how i'm feeling you know i'm telling you how i feel when you know i meet the house in that state you know and i'm not ascribing blame to you i'm literally asking you to do something you know so we could move forward you know so let me give another one more example imagine you're at a family gathering and one of your relatives say something plain offensive you know flat out saying oh you're being shitty or you're a shitty person so that person is not going to foster a reasonable conversation you're probably going to blow it up into like a a fight you know or something but you know if you frame the conversation in a more helpful way it's definitely more likely to create a dialogue you know because you basically just be calling them in and not calling them out so you see even when you say calling them in you're calling them in you're trying to you know reason with them you know but when you're calling them out you're you're ready you're ready for fights <laughs> when when you jam some people that don't even have chill like they don't they have no chill yeah they would show you why they have no chill some people you're not even whether now i'm not even talking about your your 
what you have in mind whether you 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 wanted to fight or not you know there's a way you're going to word whatever you're you're telling them what the information you want to pass on to them and they'll think you want to fight and before you know it you've received one slap so what i'm saying is mind how you phrase your words but obviously you should know it is a different conversation entirely if it's not the first time that that person is actually being well shitty you know it's, if it's not the first time that's a different ball game but if a loved one uses a wrong or you know offensive word and you feel that you can put in that emotional labor i don't know why really chose to use that word labor but yeah you know if you feel you can put in that emotional work to like you know talk about it calling them in instead of calling them out will definitely definitely go a long way the next tip is that you don't have to win every discussion most of the time even difficult conversations with loved ones are not a competitive game Conversations about household chores, you know, planning for the future, or, you know, even beliefs don't need to have a winner and a loser. It's not a competition, for real. If you view every interaction with a loved one as a competition, you might win an argument at great cost. And the toll that it's going to take is not even going to be worth it. Imagine your partner shouting in victory every time you guys have difficult conversations. The relationship will suffer you'll be tired at the end of the day you know so even in major disagreements the goal should be to move the relationship forward and that means everyone wins even when you know they have to compromise another tip is to listen to them and their fears an important thing to remember when having a difficult conversation is to listen you might be, you know, all hopped up on adrenaline and, you know, anxiety, but allowing your loved ones space to express their feelings, you know, making them, you know, comfortable enough or giving them that chance, you know, to express themselves and their feelings and be heard is very, very important. Instead of catching your breath and waiting for a pause so that you can start arguing your side again, you know, listen to what they're saying. Walk to understand why, you know, they feel or act the way they do instead of ascribing intent. If your goal is to work together with your loved one to find a solution, that can only truly be done by understanding each other, you know, and trying to understand where each of you is coming from. Listening to your loved one's concerns, you know, can actually help foster a conversation it could help it could help you guys come to it could help you understand his view or his side better so you know okay this is where this is where he's coming from or this is where she's coming from you know fear is a powerful motivator and and it can overwhelm logical thinking so listening to your loved one talk about their fears you know even if it's not even founded even if it's an unfounded fear you know will actually make them feel validated you're not actually validating their problematic belief though. you're just validating the fact that they feel scared Do you get you're giving them that space to express their fear and that is more than enough people may feel attacked if they feel they're being you know criticized for for a belief that they honestly hold so please just be be patient you know give them that time give them that space you know to to express themselves and um i mean at the end of the day let them feel like their concerns are validated. The next tip is to acknowledge your bias and assumptions. Everybody is the main character in their story. And um, while you might try your best to be open and understanding to other people, you will always have a bias because you are the only one that can know your own point of view. So you have to acknowledge that and understand that your truth is not necessarily the objective truth. In the same way, yeah, as tempting as it might be to, you know, plan out exactly what your loved one is going to say before a discussion. You're making assumptions about their feelings and their perspective. Let's go back to that example I made, you know, earlier of the argument about cleaning the house or the, the dishes being left in the sink and all of that. I mean, you're getting into the house and the whole place is all messy. It can be tempting for you to, you know, assume that your partner is just being lazy, but that's still an assumption. There are other possibilities. So, like I stated earlier in my previous tip, listen, listen to them work to understand their perspective without judgment because that's what you want them to do if you were in their shoes too the next tip is to deal in good faith 
by good faith i don't mean religious faith or <laughs> i'm talking about the legal term if you've seen um the show suits or the good wife um if you've seen the show suits or the good wife you probably know that good faith is the sincere intention to deal fairly with others so you should basically go into the conversation with good intentions you know towards creating the best possible result for everybody that is involved sometimes that might mean you know that you're right but remember the point is not for you to be right that's not the point so just be kind and be the amazing person that you are and your loved ones will be inspired to be kind as well another tip is to start with your boundary think of it like setting a boundary as i mentioned earlier the best way to set boundaries is to explain how you feel for example i could say if someone is choosing not to be vaccinated then i don't feel safe having them over for dinner regardless of whether we're related or in the case where you have a family member who talks crap about you know women's reproductive health you could say when i hear you talk like that you know about women's reproductive health it makes me feel uncomfortable i don't want to feel that way around my family if the person gets angry you can choose to end the conversation and enforce your boundary at that point you need to do what is best for your mental health because at the end of the day i mean you're not if if the person was making those you know statements distasteful statements and you walked out that's different but this time you actually went over to the person and told them how you felt about it or how you feel about it and if they decided to ignore your feelings and you know just go ahead with whatever they're saying you do what's best for you and your mental health and walk out or leave or whatever you know whatever works for you and you just hope that your loved one figures it out on their own basically lastly yes my last tip is to work through the awkwardness if someone is you know open to having a conversation in good faith then you can choose to continue or you know plan a future time to talk it's probably going to be awkward but you know you cannot make an omelette without breaking a few eggs um there's this book i don't know if you know it so you want to talk about race and the author is um ijama Olua. and in this book she had something to say about working through awkwardness she said to know what your goal is and state that goal and then tailor the conversation towards that if you come in really confrontational and your goal is to get them to be more supportive of you that's not going to achieve the goal so if you're going to have a difficult conversation with somebody and you want them to accept or you want them to know you know that maybe the things they've been saying are unacceptable then maybe just saying you know this is unacceptable this is how i feel about this you know and this is you know why i think it's unacceptable maybe that's your goal maybe that's how you should you know come across maybe that's what you should actually tell that person and of course this is all related to good faith conversations if your loved one seems open to chat but then you know refuses to acknowledge their bias or uses false evidence without remorse or is even hostile then the only thing you can do is enforce your boundary it really sucks you know because you you never want to feel like you need to choose between your own mental health and a loved one but you need to remember that you know all you can control is your words and your actions not your loved one's response or how they react to it you know and i hope that this helps you deal with major disagreements or difficult conversations with your loved ones if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you haven't done that already if you have any video ideas just let me know in the comment section or you could hit me up on instagram at yvonne underscore uka y-v-o-n-n-e underscore uk you can also check the description box for details on how to reach me and if your ideas are feasible i'll get right to it thanks for watching and have a beautiful beautiful day or night bye